come where the true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth it's one thing to be a sound maker it's another thing to be a proclaimer but when you in fulfillment of the word of the Lord to glorify magnify and exalt by form of worship and praise but to tie it in with truth that truth is the obedience of the word of God. That truth is in compliance with taking a name in baptism, a name that is above all names, a name that is associated with identity and not a name of an illegitimate child that the Bible speaks of. That's why, that's why when I was baptized as a kid in the Roman Catholic Church that I was actually, number one, I wasn't baptized because I was sprinkled. That, that, that is not being submerged. Number two, I was not taking identity. I was in the form of an illegitimate son because I had no last name. But when God found me and filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I didn't get trained on speaking in tongues. Amen. I just had an encounter with God and spoke in tongues. That it was mandated that I be buried, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. When I came into knowledge of understanding that there is an urgency of of revelation of the oneness of God because you can you can receive the Holy Ghost but not have revelation of the oneness of God you can you can receive the whole you can be baptized in Jesus name and not have revelation of the oneness of God Jesus teaches this principle in the word and you you think I preach long you, you show up at his sermons, they all day long. <laughs> he gives them a little break and then gets back to preaching. Then he gives them a little break, then he gets back to preaching. And he gives them a little break and he gets back to preaching and he sends them home right before dark. <laughs> there has to be an understanding of the revelation of who God is. If you're here today and you don't have revelation who God is, you need to pray for revelation of who God is. Because every daddy has a name. Every son has a name. Every individual has a name. Amen. And there are a lot of gods in this world. You see, a God is not just in position of who deity is who jehovah is but people make gods in this world there 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 there's gods now i don't know why you'd want to worship a rock but there are people that worship rocks there, there are people that worship stars now i like stars but they're pretty in the sky and not pretty in my mind of worship and so you have to have a revelation of who this god is that was uh, prophesied and he was wrapped up everybody say he was wrapped up he wrapped himself in flesh to bring revelation or bring reveal to his name his saving name and so I am thankful today that when I worship the Lord I am not worshiping him just out of adoration I am not just proclaiming praise unto the Lord because the Bible declares it, but I, the Bible says that you worship Him in spirit and, everybody say and, and truth. And while the scripture declares that let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. So it is not wrong because you don't have a revelation of the fullness of the word of God 
to worship Him. We are, we are called to praise Him at all angles, all levels, all areas of life. That we have breath, we praise Him. But, but, but there is a, a, a distinct difference between the sound of praise and a voice of worship. There is a emotional shift. There is a, there is a spiritual change in the differences of the two. And uh, so clap your hands unto the Lord. All ye people, you are praising the Lord. You are all, all form. All form is praising the Lord. Amen. But to enter in to the realm of worship, you bring to you a, a level of knowledge. You bring a spirit of understanding when you are praising. Of course, you can't get to worship without praise. That's adoration unto God, and you are adoring Him to where there is a shift in the spirit. I'm just going to try to help somebody, and I'll preach in a minute. I'll get to the second sermon. But but when you are praising Him and you shift to worship, worship is not predicated upon the song or the sound or the atmosphere or the quality of people present or the amount of people present. It is a shift of a spiritual dimension. And so when you enter into worship, you are, you are excluding those that are around you. You, you are in a, a position, a posture of uh, worshiping God. And uh, when you are worshiping God, there is, a, there is a level of worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. And so you have to have the revelation, the understanding, and the knowledge. I don't want to just worship the Lord even because the Bible said worship Him. I want to be obedient to the Word of God, but I also want to understand what thus saith the Word of the Lord. I do want to comprehend the instructions of the Word of God. Hey, let me challenge this church this morning to get back to reading your Bible. I know it's getting quiet. We all read our Bibles, but I'm talking about getting into the Word of God. I'm talking about opening up this book for some understanding. Amen. Now, when I have a problem with a vehicle, I go to the manual and I find out where the schematics are and I, I look for the different power sources representing that, that particular element that I am trying to diagnose. And so in doing so, it, it helps me to get to the matter. I, I want to challenge you to get into this word. I want to challenge you to get into the knowledge of truth. I, I don't want you to just read the Word of God. I want you to study the Word of God to where you can ingest the Word. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of the Lord. Amen. But when you are when you are be able to, to decipher, when you, you can get the knowledge and the wisdom of God and you can begin to quote. I, I, I've been setting up some studies for me in, in, off of my phone because I use the notes there a lot. And I'm putting different segments of the of the scriptures in different categories, and uh, making it a point to start praying over those verses and quoting those verses and memorizing those verses. It, do we still believe to, to, that we need to learn the Word of God? Making sure I'm in the right church this morning. You're quiet. This is Memorial Day, and you you parted too late. You said, "Well, I was at your house." <laughs> I don't know what that says for me too much, but anyway. Thank you, those of you who were able to come, greetings, and thank you. But uh, you get that word of the Lord in your heart, church. Amen. And, and you, you quote that word. I, I challenge you to, 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 to get with your family and, and just kind of have a little sword drill with the word of the Lord. Understanding the scripture, comprehending the word of God. You're not going to be judged by the advocate. The morning advocate. You want you're not gonna be, be, be judged by, by Facebook news. You're not, you're not gonna be judged by the latest and the greatest who got this going and what, what John ate for dinner and what Susie had for breakfast. You're gonna be judged by the word of God. Now I'm not against socializing. I don't don't I, I'm not against that. I'm just telling you that you need to get your manna from the word of God and not your manna from the media. You need to get your manna from, from the scripture. You need to get something. You need, you, 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 if you, 
I, I like Vienna sausages. It's one of the fastest meals when you're tired and exhausted. And there's not, in my mind, when I'm eating Vienna sausage, I, I mix ketchup and I mix Tabasco and I put Tony Sasher over there and I mix it up. And I just imagine I'm eating raw oysters and it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> And about the same taste. <laughs> and, and, and so, but but if, if I'm I'm only eating eating those Vienna sausages, hey man, it's gonna have a result in my performance. It's gonna have a result in my mentality. It's gonna start showing that I'm gonna be well balanced by having a bubble in the middle. So, well, some of you missed that. It's too early for you. Amen. Well, let's just preach today. You're not interested in all that. But you got to get the word of God. Get you some balance. Amen. You better be able to, you, you need to be able to quote some one God scriptures. You need to be able to quote and be able to explain why you were baptized the way you were baptized. When I worship, I'm bringing those strands of truth. And those strands of truth is a confirmation of who he is, what he's done, the power of the God that I serve. And so when we're worshiping him, we are bringing the knowledge of the truth in a confirmation form. Wow, that's, that's, uh, let's go to something simple. Let me go to something where I'll really lose you today. Mark chapter 12. I love you. I love you. I appreciate you. Amen. I want to help someone today. I, I, now, turn to your neighbor and say, that little button that you hit when pastor is preaching and it gets on your toes, tell them to move that button out of reach today. I'm going for the juggler vein today, honey. No, no, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, they're already leaving. <laughs> I'm teasing. Mark 12, verse 41 and 44. Now, you, you, you gotta understand in its context, the intense diversity of, of uh, sword cutting. Uh, when I read to you what I'm gonna read, you really have to take into understanding the stage of this text. So let me read it and then we'll explain. Verse 41, and Jesus sat over against the treasury. I still got you still with me? And behold how the people cast money into the treasury and many that were rich cast in much. Hallelujah. And there came a, a certain poor widow, and uh, she threw in, uh, you know, there's different ways of giving offerings. Uh, she threw in two mites, which make a birthing, and he called unto him his disciples. Now, now, it wasn't the full congregation that he was making a spectacle out of this particular illustration a form of worship and praise. And so uh, he, he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily, I say unto you that this poor little lady, this poor widow, hath cast in or cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. Now that's mind boggling for the simplicity of humanity that are fishermen and they're just rough guys because they're, you know, we're, 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 we're sheet balancers. Men are sheet balancers. And so we're, we're thinking, uh, he gave a hundred, she gave 20, uh, he gave 75, he gave a thousand. And this little lady came by and she tossed a couple of uh, mites in a few cents into the offering plate and, and Jesus, kind of twist our mentality. You, you, you see, if you let the Lord talk to you, he will minister to you on your level ground. And so he knew the mentality of humanity. He, 
He knew the thinking of the disciples, and so he brought them in, and he is conveying truth. And so he proceeds to, to explain. He proceeds to illustrate uh, why he is saying this. For all they did cast of their abundance, they gave from different sources of their wealth. But she, this little lady, gave from her poverty. She gave from, uh, from, from her poor state, but she of her won't did cast in all that she had, even all her living. Now, I, I want you, I, I'm, I'm going to come back to this, but I want you to comprehend from the start of Jesus' service that day. This was the landing pad. This was the point of it all. Now, if I'm going to take up an offering, I'm not. If I'm going to take up an offering, I'm going to take it up. That's why we apostolics take it up before the preaching and not after the preaching. <laughs> I'm going to take it up when everybody's happy. Everybody's just, got, Sister Lisa, I want to pray for you right now. I feel the Holy Ghost to touch you right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would touch Sister Lisa's body right now. Again, we pray, but I'm praying right now. Lord, every infirmity in the name of Jesus, Lord, I, I pray that cloud lift off of her. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let the church say amen. And so I would take that offering when the emotions are good and everybody's happy and happy people who are giving, giving people. And Jesus waits till he castigates. He waits till he is in conflict. Of course, it's not him that is in confliction. I want to preach to you this morning on the art of giving. The, the art of giving. But I want you to really pray today because if you miss what the Spirit is trying to say, if you miss the depths of the message, you're going to leave here and get caught up on the wrong elements. You're... you're hmm. You're, you're, you're going to leave here thinking that the pastor wants your money and you're going to miss everything I'm trying to say. I read uh, last night late one pastor was proclaiming uh, that the Lord spoke to him that by the end of the year he was going to take up $300 million in an offering. Now that's, that's, that's between them. Uh, what they want to do at another church or another denomination or that's their prerogative. We're... We're, we're, not a, we're not about money. Let me tell you again, we're not about money. But there are principles that, I'm going to let you sit in just a moment and I'll stand longer. There are principles about the Word of God that you have to make connection to. Because if you miss, is that the horn or the car? I'll make sure if the train's coming, I'll, I'll pause. If you miss what the scripture is trying to lead you and teach you about, then you're going to have that. I don't even know how to exp how to say it. I don't even know if there's a word to attach to that feeling when when something is said about money and rises up. Anybody have a good word to explain that resistance? Maybe uh, when when you feel that. Lord, we need you today. I need your help. I, I don't want to ramble today. I certainly want to be, Lord, in, in the confinements of your word to help and strengthen somebody. I pray for the Holy Ghost to help us today on this Sunday morning. In Jesus' name, God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> be seated. I've been making sure you're paying attention. There are certain... I'm going to operate in a different form today, if you'll let me. There are different um, 
forms that the Lord uses for people. Every one of us, or most of the time, we have a specific uh, nudging that the Lord does that conveys to you uh, the voice, the instructions, the information that God is trying to do in you, with you, and through you. There are things that we uh, announce, one of the, the big words that we like to use today that it sounds just, it, it's soothing. It's the prompting. Everybody say the prompting. And, and, and there, there are promptings of the Spirit, just like they're prompted to blow the horns and all the noise that they're making today. Why today? They're, they're prompted. Uh, the, and, and, and the devil was not in the phone booth today. He was in the sound booth, and it wasn't Sister Jessica. Contrary to Brother Jeff's mentality or quote or expression. It gets in our electronics, and uh, nonetheless, there are promptings in the Spirit of God. There are stirrings and botherings or movings. There are shiftings, things that if you as the people of God will listen, saints of God, followers of Christ, uh, Christians that are Holy Ghost filled, that the Lord will find a pattern in you but will not be uh, specifically set to that pattern all the time. He will shift on you. He will he will move in out of the normal form that you are accustomed of God talking to you or God getting your attention or God uh, conveying to you a mission or a plan that he is trying to do. Uh, I, I, I like when God is uh, on, on the same pattern with me, when God talks to me in the same mannerisms, but it does not lose the effect. I tell you, when I don't like promptings, and that's at 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, I'm not fascinated by, by losing sleep. I can work hard, I can run long, but I love sleep. I'm not like my nephew, uh, Justin, that wants to be up at before. Uh, he, I, I think he's assigned to wake God up every day. I, don't understand. I mean, how can a man get up at 5 o'clock in the morning with a rag in his hand and wipe and wash his car? 5 o'clock in the morning? I don't understand that. I'm, I'm, I don't like to be prompted at, uh, at, at, at unannounced times when I really want my privacy. But God has a way of moving and ministering to people. He's got a way of nudging you. He's got a way of just kind of reaching within your bosom and, and directing you. Now, a lot of times that we are, I tell you, I'm going to be different today. A lot of times that we are, we are prone to override the promptings of the Spirit. Uh, we, we, we are too busy or, in my case, too sleepy at 2 o'clock in the morning. And, and occasionally, it's about a 50-50. 50, I'll obey, and 50, I just, uh, Lord, I'll check it on you in the morning. <laughs> now, I, I'm just being honest. I, I don't always yield to the prompting. I don't always get up when he says get up, and uh, probably more than 50, I do. But uh, there are times that uh, I, I don't. And, and, but there are ways that God tries to get your attention. There are ways that God is, is, is nudging you. He's moving on you. We get excited about particular operations of the gifts of God, the Spirit of God. People want to operate in the prophetic. We rejoice when the Spirit of God's moving. And I, I've got a word for the Lord for you today. Or I, I'm, not, I'm not making light or fun of that. Please don't misconstrue what I am doing today. And, and, and so we are, we are elated by the energy that is transmitted in the prophetic. We, we seem to have more energy that is associated that many, 
Many want to be used to uh, be givers of knowledge in particular fashions that God brings warnings or instructions by a way of prayer, by way of revelation that transpires in a spiritual dimension. We, we all have a desire to, to be showy in some form or fashion. They, 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 they may be not as notable uh, where we like that attention or we like the recognition, but uh, uh, we want the power of operation. We want to know that if I lay my hands on, on the sick that they're going to uh, recover. Brother Jeff, I believe, has the gift of healing that works through him. I tell him that oftentimes, and, and uh, I'm encouraging him in that area. And uh, so they, the gift of healing on him may be at a different level, but they have to be graduated to become more profound or more, more frequent in operation. But uh, there, there, there is a, if I was to say, God wants to touch you, and I laid my hands on you today, and then you start trembling, then there is a, there is a, a temptation for me to get uh, proud about that. Now, now, we understand the scripture says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So we are powerhouses. We, we, are, we are charged by the Spirit. We are, we are enforced by the Holy Ghost. And so at times we are prompted to travail and we fall on our face in home or at church and we travail before the Lord. We intercede, whatever the case may be. There is an enlightenment, there is a, an appreciation, and there is a desire for that. I'm, I'm going to help you today, I promise you. This is different, but it's going to help you today. And, and so we, we are quick to lend our energy to that facet or that particular vein or that particular channel because we experience the fruit of our labor. We see God doing it. We see manifestations. We see the visual. We see the miracles. We see the power. We see the operation of God's power doing phenomenal things. When God fills someone with the Holy Ghost, you, I want to tell you that every angel in heaven stops and they rejoice uh, because somebody just repented of their sins. That's powerful. And so these are the areas that we are, are so excited about. It, it's great. And I, I applaud thee, and I encourage you to continue in these facets. But uh, Jesus is preaching. He starts to his audience, and, and it's a rather long sermon because he shifts. But while he is shifting, there is spiritual activity that is taking place in his ministry. Spiritual because God is touching lives and changing lives. Spiritual because the adversary does not appreciate what is taking place in the ministry. And so while the Holy Ghost is working, the devil is working. While the Spirit of God is working, the enemy is working. While holy power of God is flowing, the demonic force of hell is undermining the spiritual activity of the kingdom of God. This is deep. It's probably too much for you today. I, I need to slow down. I need to slow down. And so Jesus is liking it unto a vineyard. He's bringing them to the vineyard, but he's fixing to clip them at their roots. And so he's setting them up, and he's talking about this vineyard, and he's talking about the servants uh, or the husband of the vineyard that are taking care of them, and thieves come in, and they're trying to override the vineyard. And, and, and Jesus is it's just kind of building them up, verse 10, and how ye not read this scripture? And so he, he addresses the underlining spirit of the adversary while he is trying to do good, while he is trying to help and minister to people, there is an underlining spirit that is trying to disassemble, trying to disunify, trying to destroy, destruct, and to create chaos. And he says, have you not read this in the scripture that the stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner? He is talking about the crucifix. 
He is talking about, you are going to crucify me. But he and his intellectual capability is conveying in parable. He is, convey, he is giving, he's spot on in his sermon, but he is condensing it to a setup because he knows while truth prevails, that, that, that false doctrine is trying to stir up what is taking place. And so Jesus begins to work and deal. And the Bible says because Jesus called the Sadducees and the Pharisees, he called them out and he, by way of sermon, addressed the issues that from that moment, the Bible says, that they sought to lay hold of him. In other words, they wanted to crucify him immediately. They wanted to arrest him right now. But Jesus is setting it all up because he's got a point to prove. And so now it's unfolding in this marathon church service that uh, they, they sent unto him, the Bible says, they, you, you determine who is they. It's the representation of a demonic force that is operating in the physical realm of man. And so the scripture says that in verse 13 that they, they sent Pharisees and of the uh, Herodians that they would come and that they would catch Jesus. You, you got you to gotta catch all this. I know it's a lot of information this morning. But they are tempting in this church service to frame Jesus to be able to fulfill their own self-plan and will, and that is to crucify the prevailing truth that is taking place in the world. And so Jesus is preaching truth, but the truth is offending certain segments of religiosity. Uh, they, they want a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They, they want to have church, but they don't want to be the church. Uh, they they, they want to profess Christ, but they don't want to live Christ. Uh, they want to talk about church, but they don't want to act like church. Uh, they want to talk about living right, but they don't want to live. Mm, they want to be able to quote the commandments, but not live the commandments. Mm, they don't want to live the commandments. They don't really they're not really interested in the fulfillment of the scripture they are not interested in a relationship with God they are only interested in a form or a fashion or a structure of the word of God these uh, Herodians uh, they are a wanting to become politically independent of uh, the Jewish people they wanted to have a representation of, of the kingdom of David to serve on the council or to be selected or elected as one of the officials or to be one of in, in position as a king or a prince or some type of rule because they wanted to have a presence of, of their expectation of uh, who they are. They wanted to have a reflection of their beliefs that would come before. And so Jesus was not interested in fulfilling man's appetite. He, he's not going Jesus will never play to your feelings. He'll never play to your expectations of what you think. It is always based upon truth. He doesn't vary. He doesn't change. He doesn't come give you some philosophy today and some doctrine today and tomorrow. Oh, because it's raining today, we're going to give you a different doctrine. There is no variations in the doctrines of God. Amen. Matter of fact, they are truths that shall prevail. Amen. The word of God is established. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God will not pass away. It will always be. When you get to heaven, you'll be able to walk up to the Bible. When you get to heaven, you'll be able to hold that word of God because it will still be there. It will last the test of time. And so it was a, it was a enforced structure of uh, challenging the freedoms of humanity. Uh, the, the Herodians came and, and they presented their case. They were trying to, uh, to try to baffle Jesus. They were trying to to change it, 
But the Bible says, and you read around verse 14 through maybe 17, that they, they, they are tampering with the, the verbiage of Christ. They are trying to manipulate, as they do the government, as they do our president oftentimes. They try to requote, but use different adjectives or, 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 or different reflections in, into uh, what they're saying. And so they'll quote part, but not all. It, it, it's nothing new. It happened in the garden. Uh, it, happened in, it happened with Adam and Eve. Because you, you, can, you can have a part of truth, and you can leave one word out that will change the whole meaning of the truth. And so they come, they come to Jesus, and, uh, and, and so they, they want to know, you know, are we, oh, we are supposed to just give to God, and you're preaching this incredible message, and it's a, it's a healing message, it's a delivering message, it's setting people free, and, and, and you're troubling our territory, our cities in uproar, and, and, and we want to know, oh, what about the government? What about, what about we, what are we going to do about, about paying our taxes, Mr. Jesus? And so Jesus, in all of his incredible knowledge, he says, well, bring to me the coin. And they, they present to him the coin, and, and he reflects to uh, the presence that was on that coin, and it was Caesar. Jesus tells them to render unto Caesar that which is Caesar, but render unto God which is God. Now, it's all a setup because it's different impressions of of the adversary that is coming again. I know his way of, you don't have to get the tape. This is the impression of the adversary that is targeting. He is targeting doctrine. He is targeting truth. I want to tell you today, the stuff you go through and, and, and the Hades you face in life and the trials you're dealing with in life is not a reflection of you. It's targeting to the God that you serve. It's the same spirit. That's why he said that the Antichrist is already in the world before he was ever announced in the end of time, that the Antichrist, the presence of spirit of the Antichrist was already among them. Why? Because there was a working of targeting to try to belittle, to try to baffle, to try to devalue, to try to disintegrate the truth of the word of God. But I want to tell you, truth will always prevail. It doesn't matter what they, they can shut the church down. Truth is going to prevail. They can take the Bible. Truth is going to prevail. They can tell you don't praise, but somewhere, somehow, truth is going to prevail. And, and, and so then Mr. Mr. Sadducee, which is a, it's a spinoff of, uh, of the Pharisees, he plays his turn at uh, trying to target the message. So he, he, he interrupts the service where Jesus is preaching. Y'all read this before, right? Maybe not on this level. But, but the, he comes to Jesus, and, and so they're, 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 they're trying to trap. They're trying to, to catch Jesus. And, and how they're going to do it, how are we going to mess it up? Uh, we're, we're, we're talking about the power of God and, and, and how we're going to confuse. You know, Moses taught us a, a certain way. Moses taught us a, a particular way. But I, I need to know, you know, what's going to happen. So, so it's, it's a conflict of doctrine. It's a conflict of a position. Hey, I'm laying all this, and you're going to say, how does that have to do with what you're fixing to say? He is, he is dealing, you know, he comes up, and, you know, I want to, I want to know about the, uh, what about this man and whose wife? Whose wife is she? Everybody's trying to give her away. She had seven husbands. She outlived every one of them, and I sure wouldn't be the eight. <laughs> At, in society, if you didn't get it, after, after the fourth, fifth, or sixth husband, you might want to leave her alone. <laughs> and so they're debating, and, and, and they're, they're trying to trap him again. It's, it's about a trap. It, uh, they, they were not interested. Jesus conveys that. And then they want to know about uh, whose wife 
is she going to be in the resurrection? Now, no, they didn't even believe in afterlife. Let me say that again. They didn't even believe in afterlife. Here's what their mentality was. They were, they were scribes that were writing. They, they were taking the, 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 the seals or the, the covenants, and they were writing. They were writers. They, 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 were, they were performing. They were structuring. And so they became very intelligent in what they were writing. They became very knowledgeable in all of the, the information that they were processing. And they became this group that, that was targeting. They're targeting Jesus because they, they were caught up in the writings, but they didn't have the relationship. You got to be careful that you just don't have the writings and not a relationship because the stuff will hurt you. I said the stuff will hurt you if all you got is a Bible that you can quote and a Bible that you can tell it all about, but there is not an activation of what the Bible says and a fulfillment to the Word of God, then, friend, you are exposing yourself to trouble. You are exposing yourself to problems. And so Jesus brings to uh, this, he's, he's summing it all up. So these scribes want to come, and uh, we've heard the reasonings together to perceive that, that he had answered them well. He, he's, they're, they're giving him a compliment because they didn't expect this, this run of targeting to last this long. Can you believe that the enemy is conceding almost to the word of God? And Jesus answered him the first of all the commandments because they wanted to know about the commandments. They, they were interested, supposedly, in some of the writings that was taking place. And so in verse 29, Jesus says, Hear, O Israel, uh, the Lord our God is one Lord. And so there, there's this oneness uh, discussion that transpires. They're, 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 they're moving on. But Jesus is not interested in all of, all of the levels of targeting because he was more interested in showing his disciples that we're going to carry this great message further to comprehend one of the greatest lessons. Now, I say it this way. How can you trust God with your soul but you can't trust him with your wallet. Mm. I didn't hear that from nobody. I didn't re read that anywhere. That's just what I say. How can you trust God with your soul that is eternity, but you can't trust him with your wallet that is temporal? And Jesus is very uh, adamant about illustrating, uh, I'm almost done, maybe. She, come help me, Brother Jared. That always makes them feel good, and it shifts them. If they were kind of drowsy, they kind of get alert. I'll buy me another 20 minutes like that. He, he's, he's interested in, in conveying all of these values and principles that he has discussed. It's, it's irrelevant unless you can master the art of giving. Because as long as you are constructed to withhold, as long as you are developed, governed, taught, learned, trained, practiced, how to withhold or save or hoarder your goods. Now, I'm not talking about just currency. I'm talking about your time. I'm talking about your talent. I'm talking about your energy. I'm talking about your fundings. And so Jesus, if, 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 if we can't master what is fixing to transpire right here, then you are going to have a hard time stabilizing your walk with God. Now, I gave my money to the world when I was in the world. I bought stuff I shouldn't have bought. I, 
I got one that done the same. The rest of you lying. You you bought stuff. Even Brother Art as as perfect as Brother Art is. I love Brother Art, and I'm not saying that facetiously. I mean that. He's such a good man. He really is. But even Brother Art, if you want to read his book, you'd really appreciate that. But even Brother Art contributed to the world. And so you have to restructure. You, you see, when, when you come out of the world, when you come into the church, there's a different dynamics that transpire. And so I didn't have a problem. When, when God filled me with the Holy Ghost, I didn't have a problem paying my tithings. I, I, matter of fact, the first two years, I might have slipped up one or two times at max uh, with giving to the Lord. And uh, so I never had a problem with giving my 10%. And I never had a problem with giving a dollar and offering. I was one that's through and through. Some of you laughing, but you've been one this for 40 years. I'm going to check the... Uh, Sister Walbert, I'm going to look at all the books. I don't want to look at tithings. They're, lo they're perfect on tithing. I want to look at the offerings. I want to make sure there's still oneness. Maybe we can get them converted. <laughs> Something different. <laughs> but God started working on me in, in a different form. And he started prompting. So I'm, I'm going to pull it all back together. And he started prompting me and, and challenging me almost. I called it testing because, I, I, I mean, I went through, to live for God, most, most folks would have gave up. I, I'm, I'm just being honest because I, I had to go through a very difficult season in my living for God because of my past. And, and I had leadership. I had preacher friends. I, you know, I, I worked. I worked as hard as I could to try to, to, to be honorable. And when, when God filled me with the Holy Ghost at a young age, I, I, I always had to have many jobs. We, we were just poor, you know. So since eight years old, I had a job. And at 10, I had three jobs. And so I always worked hard. I'm not against that. You, you ought to try that, some of you young people. But uh, I, I come into the church, God filled me with the Holy Ghost. And, and I people started accusing me among among godly people they were accusing me of doing drugs and i hadn't done drugs in at least two days no i'm teasing i'm teasing i'm just making sure you're paying attention <laughs> i'm making sure you're still there uh, it's been two years and, and 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 i promise you i was living as much as I knew how I wasn't perfect, but man, I was in this thing. I was praying sometimes five, six hours a day. That was more than my accusers. Not that we compare them, but, but they, they, I'm, I, I went through a horrible time and I, I really, I, I told God, if this is what it's about, man, I know it's real, I feel it, but Lord, I don't know how much I can handle of this. I, you know, I was being accused of, of doing drugs and selling drugs and I was getting money from, from drug deals and all of that stuff. The only thing I ever done bad was sell a Ford. I didn't sell drugs ever. And, and so I, I went through all of this and, and, and the Lord started testing me. And he tested me with my money because I never had anything. And I, and I started living for God, and then I started getting a little change, literally change. <laughs> and, and, and God would move on me, you know, nobody told me anything, but God would start speaking and stirring. And I'd feel a prompting in my, my spirit, and God wouldn't leave me alone. I told somebody recently, I said, I'm going to tell you what, if you ever feel the need to give, it will never be the devil. You don't have to worry. The devil will never make you feel like you need to give. And so uh, we, we started giving uh, early on in our marriage. We, we made some, I'm saying this, I'm bringing this to somewhere that I want to help you today. And uh, early on in our marriage, we didn't have anything. My wife thought I had money and that's why she married me. 
I had, I had the latest and the greatest. Man, I would drive up in some of the newest. Man, I don't know if y'all remember the Mazda 929. That was, that was just bodacious to me. That was the ultimate machine. But what I didn't tell her, it was really four cars. <laughs> that had the same color paint. <laughs> I'm serious, cutting cars in half and doing all that stuff, and, and they, they were nice vehicles. But, but, so we didn't have much when we got married. But we had love. We, uh, Brother Orp, when we were, when we were y'all youth pastor and assistant pastor in Baton Rouge, we didn't tell you, but my wife fell through the bathroom floor in our, our church provided trailer. <laughs> We never said anything. That's before I was handyman. Now y'all know why I'm a handyman. <laughs> no, you wasn't. It was just, we went through some, some rough times. And God, at, at the most unlikely moment, would ask us to give $500. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I am telling you, that was sacrifice. That was, that was, now, now we got, we got a pastor friend in our area. I won't say names. I'm good at making people give. I don't use that here. You, you will know that. We were at a, we were at a, a general conference and I leaned over and he had a very pricey watch on a Rolex. And I leaned over to him, not saying no names, so you'll never know. And I said, the Lord just spoke to me for you to give that watch in the offering. I wasn't being serious. I was just kind of testing. Boy, he looked at me. He done this. He looked at me again. And he done, he done this again. And he took it off and he started walking. And I stopped him because it wasn't the Lord. Now, if it was the Lord, you give it. But it really wasn't the Lord I was messing with. Him. So I have a way. I, I have a way of getting it if that's what we want. I, I have the tendency to be a little mischievous sometimes. Don't mess with me. <laughs> I'm a fighter and a mischievous. <laughs> and so the Lord would show up at the odd times. 500 here. 1,000 here. Remember we were sitting in one of the conferences and we, we wanted to give. We didn't have much to give. And we sat at the most unfortunate place next to another preacher family that was pastor. We weren't pastor. We were evangelizing. We were, we were rolling. They raised their hand. They were going to give $1,000. We didn't raise our hand. We gave them 500 Because <laughs> the Lord had stirred us to, to help with that offering. That's small stuff. The Lord started a small. I, I, I want to help somebody because I preached a while back. I preached a while back. You were not here, but I preached on, on Zoom. That the Lord was impressing somebody to sow a seed in the field that they are wanting to reap in. And so it's not just about money, but I, I want to make a point that uh, God has always taken care of us. There were times we had to have assistance like when we were at a minister's conference with all of our big shot friends. And, uh, you know, I wanted to impress my wife, so I bought us a Lincoln Town car. It was only, I don't know, maybe $1,000. <laughs> Nobody knew how much we paid. I bought it. We were big shot. And so while we were at the conference, the car broke down on us. I said, I, said, I tell you what, all those big shots on the platform, there were thousands of people, all those big shots on the platform, I bet none of them showed up to church on the back of a record truck with lights flashing. But the Lord came through and he blessed us. You see, when you're planning a, when you're planning a garden and you just want a quick return, there are a few things that you're gonna plant. But if you're planning for an eternity, you're gonna be with the longevity some, some plants take a long time. You gotta cultivate, you gotta nurture. Some are very needy, but the benefits of that plant is overwhelming when it blossoms. 
And Jesus, I know I've been long today, but I have to give you some of my message. Let's stand. Jesus brings, he brings his disciples. The Lord's speaking to somebody right now about a certain avenue right now. The Lord is, the promptings we've been talking about, the Lord has already touched you. You felt it deep in your spirit. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. You obey the moving of the Spirit. Jesus brings his disciples. Come here, guys. You got to see this. And he, he huddles his 12 disciples. And he, he looks at a, a woman he could have used, the attorneys or the doctors or all the others that had given. They, they were so generous. They, they were. But the lesson that he needed his, his close followers to learn is that if you're going to give out of your abundance, you're going to remain shallow. See, you, you can't know him in the fellowship of his sufferings if you never hurt. You can't know the Lord if, if the only time that you can truly worship and serve the Lord is when the, when the winds are not blowing and the water is calm and the sun is shining and the, the stars are sparkling and... My friend, anybody can live for God in the, in the calmness of life. So Jesus was not interested in the mentality of the Pharisees and the Sadducees that had studied to follow him, but not emotionally follow him. They, they, were, they were prone to program to follow from only what they knew but not by what they experienced. And so their accusations of targeting were easy, easily influenced by the spirit of the Antichrist because they didn't have the full ingredients. And Jesus says, he brings them, I'm, 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 I'm done. Let's just gather around the front. I'd even get me closer. I, I'm just trying, but I, my, I feel, I really feel the Lord working today. Listen, I'm not preaching to you a doctrine today. The Bible says that you're obligated to pay your tithings. That's 10%. Out of, out of 14 years of this church, I may have mentioned preaching on about tithings included in my message maybe twice. I'm not boasting other than to give praise to God that we have never had a financial problem in this church. We have never struggled. This church has never struggled. Never. We've always met our bills, our obligations. We've always, we've done extra. We try to have a nice presentation. It always comes through. God's always come through. So I'm not preaching a doctrine today for you about this, what this lady done. I'm just telling you that if you're trying to get a breakthrough, if you're trying to get to the next level, if you're trying to open up new veins or new avenues, most of the time, this is where it starts. You know why? Because where a man's treasures are, the scripture says, that's where his heart is. God doesn't need this. He never needed my $500. He never needed my $1,000. And he never needed, and I won't tell you, but we were just recently able to give the largest offering we've ever given in our life. But it didn't start by all of a sudden, I'm going to give a big offering. It started way back. We're going to trust you, Lord. Your money and the amount of money you give is irrelevant. I want you to hear your pastor today. 
It's irrelevant the amount of money you give. The power is not in the amount. The power is in the sacrifice. Because anybody can scrape the fluff off the top. But it gets a little rocky when you got a cut and you start getting close to the bill money. And you start getting close to the project money. And you start getting close to the to the extra, you know, I want this or this appliance. I want that. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not telling you. But I'm going to tell you, you'll get a better deal. You'll get a better deal. But if you'll obey the Holy Ghost, if you'll obey the Holy Ghost, you'll get the best of both worlds because you'll get what you want. Plus, you're going to help in another field. Proving that. Proving that. I'm challenging you today. I'm challenging you today because here, if the Lord doesn't impress you, you don't do it. I'm not picking up an offering and I'm not talking about specifically for today, today. But I'm challenging you to look over your wallet. The church can always use more money, but we don't need more money. I'm not preaching because we need more money in this church. The tithings account is doing excellent. It's got a large amount in that account. The church is doing excellent. We meet our needs. We meet our bills. I'm not preaching for the benefit of the church. I'm preaching for the benefit of the people of God. Now, let, let me rock your world. You can be, you can be, a giver, a natural giver, and overgive. You can overgive. There's a family in particular I'm talking about today, and I won't call no names. If I said something, they'd give in. It doesn't matter what it is. I'm telling you, they they would sell their car, they would sell the house, they would. If they get it, the church has got it. Sometimes you got to appreciate the benefits of the blessings of God too. So you don't, I, I know I got a lot to say today, but it's not, we're moving into a different vein. Don't, don't give all your seed away because you're going to have to plan again. You, you, you follow this? Just makes sense. So, so if, if, if I'm buying watermelon and I, I buy a hundred watermelon today and I make, I make a thousand dollars and I've got a thousand dollars plus the extra thousand that I invested. If, if I'm generous, I feel good to give the two thousand dollars, but next week I don't have a thousand dollars to buy the hundred watermelons to make the other thousand dollars, which would make sense. It would make sense to withhold that thousand of investment to purchase the seed of, of being prosperous so you can continue on, not just a one-time blessing, but you continue on your giving, your giving, your giving, your giving, your giving. And so you can't out, you, you, you can't out give God, but you can out give your blessing if you're careful. There's principles in the word of God. And so I'm not picking up an offering because I, it's emotional and I, I could get, I could, we could get an unbelievable offering this morning. If I picked up an offering right now, we'd get a big offering. And if my intentions were wrong, that's what I would do. But that's not what I'm trying to practice or teach you today. That's not what it's about. It's about relinquishing. It's about opening up some avenues in your spirit that you are keeping sealed. You've got to break the seal. That's why That's why some of the disciples that, that were there that had the same lesson, but yet they were frustrated when, when, when the woman with the alabaster box that took a year's work of mischievous lifestyle to purchase the perfume, and when she broke the seal and poured it on Jesus' feet, they were, they were just, they were aggravated. They were disturbed because they did not learn the value of opening their expressions to God. Hear me, young people. 
You better learn to give to God. You better, you better learn to give. You may be giving. I don't check on all that. You may be giving, but I'm going to tell you, you want, a, you want a bright future, you make a pattern of giving for God. Because if you take care of God, God will take care of you. If you take care of God's needs, God's going to take care of your needs. And, and I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but there, there, there is an art to giving. And that, that's, that's following the promptings of the Spirit outside of your tithings and your offering. I'm talking about a sacrifice of giving. And, and, and God's moved on some folks, whether it's your time, whether it's your money, whether it's your effort, whether it's your, your talents or whatever. I'm pre I, we're using money today, but we're covering all categories this morning. I wonder this morning that you can lift up your hands and ask God to open up a brand new harvest in your life. A brand new harvest in your life. Now listen to me. The Bible says to try the spirit. So, so, so emotionalism will fool you, but you have to try the spirits to make sure that that's what God is, is probing you to do. Would you lift up your hands and ask God to take you into another dimension to help you? You can't trust him with your money. You surely can't trust him with your soul. God, I need you, Lord. I need you today. I worship you, Lord. Come on, just reach out and touch him for a moment. Come on, just reach out and touch him for a moment. Oh, God, you're so awesome. You're so awesome. You're so awesome, Lord. We need you, Jesus. We need you today. We need you today. Come on, I feel like the Lord is moving somebody. I, I, I feel like there's several people here today that the Lord is moving you to a level of sacrifice. I don't know if it's your money. I don't know if it's your time. I don't know if it's your talent. I don't know what it is. But I, I, I just feel this morning that the Lord is, is trying to move somebody. And it's always connected to spirituality. Hear me today. It's always connected to spirituality. Because when you relinquish, when you open up, when you turn it over to Jesus, amen, he always finds ways to benefit you. He finds ways to bless you. Oh, God, I love you, Jesus. Put your hand on someone's shoulders. If you're not, now it's not mandated if you, you, you don't feel uh, that, that that's in necessary that's fine i respect that the times that we're in for the moment but i'm asking that you would find somebody to pray for we can't abandon the apostolic message church we can't abandon the apostolic message for the things that god wants to do for us and in us we need the help of the holy ghost we need the strength of god we need the power of god working in our midst Oh, God, stir us today. Come on, pray over your neighbor right now. Pray over their finances. Pray over their spirituality today. Pray over their life. Pray over their family right now. Pray over their home in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch our homes today. Lord, touch our homes. Touch our families today, God. Lord, help us to perceive the Word of God. Help us to comprehend the Word of God. Help us to understand the areas that you're working in. Oh, God, that your kingdom will prevail, God. That your kingdom will prevail, God. We love you today. We love you today. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. Oh, you're so good to us, God. You take care of us. You, you protect us, oh, God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Anybody feel like the Lord spoke to him today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this good day. We thank you for your word. Oh, we're indebted for truth, God, to merge with worship. 
Lord, I, I, I don't want to preach what I can't practice. Lord, I want to be a servant from my wallet to my head. I want to surrender my time, my efforts, my talent. We've done it. We will continue to do it. God, we love you. Bless your people today, Lord. Lord, help those that have not fully comprehended that you would train and teach and develop them today. Lord, we give you glory for what you're doing. We love you today. Lord, meet our needs. There are needs here today in this local assembly. Meet the needs, God. Meet the needs. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Love one another. We'll see you on Tuesday evening. Y'all are amazing people.